It's all connected. Jesus. Put it in four wheel drive. Quit being a wiener. It moved. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, how you guys doing today? I hope you guys are having a good Saturday. Just like I said yesterday's in yesterday's video, we're gonna be doing a uh, coolant flush today on the Cummins. Uh, I'm in the truck right now. She's idling. Uh, I'm actually about to go soon. That way it doesn't get too hot. Uh, we're gonna go to AutoZone or Advanced Auto. We're gonna pick up some uh, coolant flush for her. I'm gonna pour it in, and we're gonna let it run through it, you know, and then come back home, and then we're gonna drain the coolant and just top her off with some of that new Amazon coolant. So, nothing crazy, but it's gonna be another good day. So you guys sit tight, and I'll see y'all in a second. Alright you guys, I just came from Advanced Auto, well I'm here right now, uh, I just picked up some radiator flush, because I don't know when's the last time uh, this, you know, it got flushed out, so we're going to do a quick a quick flush on it, we're not going to do the extended one, uh, pretty sure it's not that bad just because my coolant runs cool, but even though your coolant runs cool, that doesn't mean that there's contaminants and dirt and grit in there, so we're going to be running some of this, uh, and I got some washer fluid. It was on sale for 99 cents, so you can't beat that. So we're gonna go back to the house, get pop the hood, and we're gonna get to work. All right, you guys, so we're at the house, we got the hood pop, and we got this already draining. Now, if you didn't know, there's a pepcock on the bottom of your radiator. Uh, I don't know where it is for other trucks, but I know for Rams, they're gonna be right here at the bottom. Uh, you wanna make sure, it's, I don't have it fully open yet, but you do wanna make sure that, you wanna make sure that uh, you got something to drain it into, because obviously, draining coolant into the environment is illegal and if you get caught you can get fined so real quick I'm gonna see if I can open that up just like that and I'm gonna let that do its thing it might take a little bit uh, take off your radiator cap so that way it can fully exhaust itself out uh, also I highly recommend not doing it when your engine is warm because if you try to take off the radiator cap while it's warm it's gonna explode it's gonna shoot out and you're probably gonna get burned so when I went to the to the hardware store I've made sure I came back real quick trying to see if we can get in there it's, it's due man I can see some I mean one good way I'm not gonna say this is a good way but one way you can look to tell see if you got nasty coolant look at your radiator cap if the bottom of this caked with orange on it and grit and stuff you know Lord forbid oil if you got oil in your coolant you know you got big problems but if it's you know uh, yeah just check it out look in there now we ain't gonna be able to look all the way in there but it is what it is so while this is draining what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this drain all the way and the instructions for the radiator flush it says to uh, you want to drain it top it off with water run it for 10 minutes with the heater on the reason why you want the heater on is because you want that your heater uh, you want it to open up and be able to go to, go through your heater core so you want the water to get in there and kind of flush out the old coolant run it for 10 minutes cut it off drain it once you drain it then you're gonna add this add this whole bottle top it off with water run it for another 10 minutes with the heater on full blast and then drain that and then you're, you're good so this is I'm this is not necessary if you're doing a coolant change I'm doing it because I know this is the stock radio radiator on the truck and I don't know when's the last time the, the coolant's been changed uh, so you know better safe than sorry but I mean it's coming out it doesn't look horrible coming out it's not all it's red but that's what color coolant is used like an orange red color on uh, these Cummins engines so definitely another thing 
another thing I wanted to say, uh, when it comes to your coolant, okay, I'm not telling you what coolant to buy, but I, when it comes to your diesel engines, I highly, highly, highly recommend using the manufacturer recommended coolant. Not the, you don't have to use the brand, obviously, because I'm using Amazon, but use the coolant part number that is compatible with your engine. Why? Because if you go pick up that cheap, uh, you know, Walmart, Preston, I mean, Preston's not cheap, but you know what I'm saying. If you just pick up the generic coolant, uh, certain engines require a certain type of additive within the coolant to protect the, the the engine okay because if you didn't know you have your engine block and in your engine block you have different jackets called cooling jackets coolant runs through those jackets to cool your block down that's how your block stays cool when it's running uh, different engines are, have different type of materials and different type of metals within it uh, depending on what type of coolant you put in you might not be getting the protection that is needed for that specific engine it's still draining uh, we're not gonna I'm not gonna make you guys watch it drain the entire time but once we get it drained out all the way I'm probably gonna open it up more. I just don't wanna get, gonna let that drain do its little thing. And then we'll go from there. I have one here, all right, and I have one over there. So these can hold 16 quarts. I think the cooling system holds six gallons. So whatever six gallons is equivalent to quarts. So, but four quarts is one gallon, six gallons. So six times four, fucking, I don't do math in public. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how much, uh, how much cooling it's gonna take. So we should be good, okay? All right, you guys, a couple things happened. Uh, finished draining it all. I, t I closed the pepcock again. Uh, there it is. I drained the entire radiator in that one 16 quart jug. Now, the system holds about 22 quarts. So there's still coolant inside the heater core, inside the engine block, okay? Not a big deal right now, because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna top her off with just regular water, top her off, but Important note, okay? Now, there is water still in the block, like I just said, but if you did a true, true coolant flush, which I honestly am not about to go that, that length, that would involve you like taking off, taking a, a plug off the side of the block and pushing the coolant out. You can do that. You might be able to, to even do it from here. You can just take it, you know, if you don't have, if you don't have an EGR here, you can just take this off right here, the blue hose, and hook it up to another hose that runs on the side of the truck. And then you can uh, let it just push it, push whatever's in there out. Okay, this is just a coolant reroute hose, that blue one. Uh, also, one thing I did here. Now on six sevens, I don't know if five nines have them, but on six sevens you're gonna have this vent right here. That is where you're gonna vent the system when you're adding coolant. So everybody knows you don't add coolant when it's just sitting. Don't you know you need it running? Why you want it running is because you want the water pump turning. Water pump's gonna be pumping water into the engine block. If you have the heater on, it's gonna pump it through the heater core, and you want that on, okay? Or you want that to be able to flow through it. So when you vent your system, don't just drain it and fill it up here and, and see it's full here and be like, oh, it's good. No, drain it. When you're adding it, you gotta keep this open, crack this up, uh, take that off so that way it can burp itself, all right? Because what happens is if it doesn't burp itself, it can cause those bubbles can uh, inside the block can cause damage to your uh, to your block. It wouldn't be immediately, but over the long time, the pressure from those little bubbles exploding or popping inside of the cylinder chambers and walls and stuff, the coolant jackets, it can cause damage. It can cause a certain type of corrosion, actually. I think it's called like a, I think it's like a either, it's not fretting. It's kind of like pitting almost, pit, uh, type of corrosion, okay? You don't want that. So I took that off. I'll leave this cap off. I'm going to crank her up. Uh, I mean, I have this open, but that doesn't really matter. I'm going to crank her up now, and I'm, we're going to add coolant. Uh, all right, you guys, so I just went ahead and filled, topped her off with water. So you can see the water there. And what I did was, all you gotta do is to crack this. I kinda tighten it up right now. But anyways, crack that, and what happens is you're gonna keep filling this up until you get a solid stream of water coming out of there. By a solid stream coming out of there, you know the system burp invented all of the air pockets in it, okay? So now what we're gonna do is, you know, put the coolant cap back on, and we're gonna crank her up and just let, turn the heater on and let this hot and let it get hot. 10 minutes, instruction says to let it run. All right, heater's already on. I already got it back here. So now we got the heater on, everything's good. We're gonna let that just run. 
the purpose of, again, the purpose of the heater core being on is, or the heater being on is so the water can go into the heater core and it can push out all that leftover coolant in the heater core, okay? So I'm gonna drain out that water that we put in it and go from there. I gotta figure out to get that out. Jesus, oh, oh, it's coming. Oh, there we go, oh, it came out. I'm gonna go ahead and get this going. Let's see if we uh, get an explosion or something. Okay. Yeah, a little something. A little burp or whatever. Okay, as long as it didn't explode and shoot it, shoot into the moon. Okay, we're draining. All right, so we're gonna let this drain again and get the leftover old coolant out. Now the purpose, now you might not think you have to run some water through there, but I recommend doing it. Why? Because by running water through your radiator before adding the new coolant, like let's say we're not even using the flush. By running water through there, you're still gonna be able to slush out, it's like, you know, mouthwash. You're still gonna be able to slush out some of that leftover stuff in there and get it all out. Cause notice how much clearer, probably can't tell, but it's a lot more clearer now than it was before because that one was reddish. This one is kind of pretty much clear. So that tells me that majority of the coolant is coming out of the system. Uh, if you look into the base of the pan, it has a little orangey haze around it. That's from that leftover coolant. So no biggie. So we're gonna let that drain out and then all we're gonna do is, when it's done, close it up, top her back off with water, but this time we're gonna add this. Let that run for 10 more minutes and after that, then we'll top her off with the good old Amsoil. Well, I figured when's a better time to break out the old coolant. So this is some good stuff right here, man. I can't wait to pour this in. Adrian, you the man. And he got us a little bottle, a little bottle of Kool-Aid right here. He gave us some of that orange Kool-Aid. <laughs> so this is supposed to be supposed to lower the temps up to 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Improves heat transfer for increased horsepower and reliability. Compatible with all water sources and radiators. Alright guys, so I finally went ahead and finished draining the, uh, the water out of the radiator. So now I added a little bit just now. But I'm going to go ahead and crank her up, and then we're going to add, uh, crank her up with the heater on, and then we're going to top her off with some water and put some of that in it. So. Okay, you guys, so I'm almost done draining the water out of the radiator from the additive, the flush additive. So now I have a little slow drip. I looked inside the radiator and the water's pretty much at the end, but you don't really want, you don't want that tap water mixing with your system, right? So how do you get it out? Easy. All you gotta do is start your vehicle and run it. Don't worry, you're not gonna overheat your truck. Nothing like that. As you can see, we don't have anything left. So that's good. But if you had water coming out, you would know, you would know you still had a, oh man, fucking rain. You would know you still had some water or coolant left in your uh, engine system. So that's good, okay? You can't see in there, super dark right now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and top her off with some of the Amsoil heavy duty antifreeze formula. Gonna go ahead and get that thing poured up in there and then we're gonna go from there, okay? Alright you guys, so I went ahead and topped it off. I made sure it was bled. Uh alright you guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go for a little trip. Uh I'm actually going to one of my buddies' homes and gonna pull out a stump out of his it's not a big stump, it's a small one. But I'm gonna use my truck to pull a stump out of his yard. Uh, on the way there, we're gonna check and monitor the coolant temps to see if there's any type of noticeable change in temperature or if it's just good that we change the coolant. So from there, that'll be it and then we'll wrap the video up, okay? All right, you guys, so we're on the road. I just started driving. Uh, keep in mind the engine was warm. Now, right now, oh, that's portable, you can't see that. Okay, so right now it's at 200, it's at 199. Uh, my average cooling temp was 200, like it was always on 200. The only time it was more than 200 was when I was like towing. Um, 
and it's, it's dropping down too. Look at that, 196. Okay, if you guys, that's from the Mini Max, and this is from the the gauge on the truck. Okay, so we got slightly cooler. Let's see how it does on the road. All right, it's kind of cool seeing it cooler below 200 on, while driving. Okay. It's fluctuating right now. I'm curious on why it's fluctuating like that. Usually my cooling gets to one temp and it kind of just stays there. Um, it's not hot outside. It's a normal day today. It's actually overcast because it's probably going to rain. Just don't know when. I don't know how it looks on the camera. But uh, yeah. So, we'll, so when I come to a stop, it drops back down. And when I start driving, it picks up again. Yeah, look at that. Drop down to 194, 195, okay. Maybe it's taking a minute for it to, the additives to kick in or something, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I guess this is good. It is, it definitely is lower than what it was before because at idle, it was always on 200. Now at idle, it's at 196-ish. You know, just steady, it's like right below the 200, the mid mark on here, so. Maybe that cooling additive stuff uh, is working, you know? All right, you guys, so this is going to be the end of the video. Hopefully, if you stuck it out to the end of the video, you guys know that the coolant flush was a success, swapping out that coolant with the AMS oil coolant. Um, noticeable temperature difference, uh, slightly. So like I said before, I would hover anywhere between 200 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, after doing it, driving around town, just finished driving. Um, the coolant it's going between 194 to 199 so it's not it's barely at 200 it went up to 200 as soon as i parked and i was idling uh but yeah so it definitely is a different game changer you know even five degrees doesn't sound like a lot but you know i'm sure over a long period of time it's good but hopefully this got this video was informative for you guys and hopefully you enjoyed it and if you did once again please give me that like uh and also give a thumbs up if you like that uh clip with me pulling out a couple tree stumps uh the first time I tried, it was in two-wheel drive, and I was like, uh, and then you, I'm sure you heard my buddy say, put it in four-wheel drive, so I said, okay, fuck it, I'm four low, dropped it in four low, and it, I, I barely gave it gas, uh, so <laughs> it was, that was kind of fun to do, uh, but yeah, so that's going to be it for today, you guys, uh, until next time, y'all take it easy, peace out, and be safe.